Coming up on this week's show, I get my portal fix with the Entropy Center. God of War Ragnarok is mere days away and spoilers are out in the world already. The Witcher 1 is getting a full remake in Unreal Engine 5 and the Callisto Protocol has been cancelled. Hello friends and welcome to the Weekend Catch-Up Club podcast, the coffee morning show brought to you every week where friends hang out and chat about some of the latest stories going on in the industry. You can follow the show on all your favourite podcasting platforms or watch the video version over on youtube.com slash gamertagged. This is episode 84 and joining me as always is the man with the personality of a can of orange tango, it's the king of the tangent, James McClellan, how are you? Morning, yep, I'm still here. You're still here. <laughs> yeah, still barely awake, <laughs> barely alive as per. But you're ticking away, so that's good. Oh, and yes. joining us in the co-host hot seat is none other than the voice from beyond. You've heard her in Roller Drome, and you're about to hear her again in Goat Simulator 3, which is imminent. It's the ethereal, the spooky, the immensely talented Sarah Lynham. Hello, it's me. <laughs> it is you. Oh, it's so wonderful to see my friends again. Week to week basis, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's awesome. It's these, these smiley faces that I see looking back at me in the little tiny cube browser window. It's almost like I can reach out and just like mush your cheeks one either side. Oh. Like I, I, I mush you. I mush you. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the drugs talking. That, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Prescription drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Prescription, Prescription drugs. Prescription. That's the disclaimer, exactly. <laughs> so, gang, we have a banger of a show. So much topics that were just coming in left and right, and we're messaging back and forth thinking, we should probably talk about that. Should we talk about that? Let's add that. Let's add that. So, I'm going to be giving my um, review of the Entropy Center. We mentioned that a couple of episodes ago. And whether or not it is the Portal 3 that we are were hoping it would be. So with that to talk about, we have Project Canis Majoris. If you remember back on the CD Projekt Red's Roadmap Showcase um, VOD that they put out a few weeks ago. One of these Witcher projects was called Project Canis Majoris. So we finally know that that is actually a full remake of the very first Witcher game. So with that to talk about. God of War Ragnarok hype. Oh my God, we got that to talk about. Spoilers are out in, out in the wild. We've been avoiding them. Sony Santa Monica has been pressing go and engage on their lawyers to crack down as much as that as possible. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. And of course, the review scores, which have just been dropping. Jamie is going to fill us in on his um, recovery, hopefully, from his 24-hour broadcast charity stream that he did last weekend. We have... Gameplay footage dropped from a new title called Wanted Dead. And it looks pretty badass. So we're going to talk about that. It looks quite early as well. So we'll dive into that a little bit. A new game, which just dropped as well, which we got an epic, like, five-minute gameplay footage of called Blight Survival, which looks freaking awesome. Oh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. I know, right? And the Callisto Protocol has been cancelled. Oh my God, what does that mean? So we'll dive into that as well. We'll dive into that as well. But let's start the show with Jamie filling us up on how how did it all go? How's your recovery from the 24 <laughs> hours? How did the event go? Oh. Tell us. It was it was interesting. Um, we wound up doing it in two sections. Uh, we hit dead air in the sort of wee small hours because most of our viewership is UK-based. So when we sure. came to around 2 a.m., like there was a couple of hangers on, but a lot of people had been just, like, we would get loads of people dropped in to support us. So thank you to everyone who did. And uh, we had really good chat going, complete insanity. There was at one point a call out, and one of one of our, our guys and, and my my child units took it and ran with it. So they were tweeting everyone they could possibly find. Saying if we raise ten grand, we picked a huge, uh, ridiculous sum of money. So if we raise ten grand, I will legally change my name to Poggers McClellan because that <laughs> became a thing. Yes, <laughs> which really because I hate that damn word. I hate it. It just it makes it's, me it's for sick. kids, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a slang for kids. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, and it just it it frustrates me terribly. So it was, uh, yeah, that was a thing. So it was lots of good chat, lots of bad. We raised a good chunk of change. I don't actually know what the total sat on at the minute, but we were creeping up towards the sort of twenty percent mark of our target, which was five hundred. So obviously at the moment, you know, times are tight all around for people. So every donation is mostly appreciated. So it went really well, but yeah, we hit there there. So we we. we we dropped out for a few hours and came back to it early in the morning, at which point I had dozed off for a couple of hours and was reasonably awake. And Al had yeah. been awake. He hadn't gone to sleep because <laughs> it would screw up his sleep schedule. So we get He's back. He's the real like, trooper here. Yeah. Which is the thing we about? I'm like, oh, okay, let's go. Here we go. We're back. Welcome to the morning. And I was like, I fucking hate video games. I hate you. I don't know why we do this. And after all of it, the important thing is we raised some money and we got some eyes on and people, you know, people engaged, which is great. A slight frustration. We did complete the Master Chief Saga playlist. We did it. Yes. We we did Good. Halo one mm. through four. Yeah. Amazing. And my achievement didn't pop, and I have to do it again. So oh, no. little oh. bit pissed off. But <laughs> oh. Did you That's manage brutal. to get the achievement? Um, that that yeah. dreaded Halo Reach achievement, where I, I th- is it as I come if, to see you die or something like that, and you have to jump came, off the cliff. If they came to hear me beg, is the name of the oh, achievement. Oh, that what it's called? That's Forever it's emblazoned called, right? in my memory. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have to uh, survive a fall that would kill you by assassinating an elite, and I. That is actually how we allow met. That achievement is is what introduced me to Al. I wrote a blog about it on my own personal site years back, just complaining bitterly about it because I've been doing it for <laughs> like twenty four like hours. You, Jamie, I like to see the personal oh. growth from Jamie. <laughs> like, he's, yeah, he complained back in you back can, ten years ago, and he's still complaining. You can follow me <laughs> about Halo as well. Yeah, you can follow me bitching about Halo all the way back to Live Journal, right? <laughs> when I'm there, like this combat evolves a bit, shit, right? So, but. No, I would never. That, that would, I would never say that. That's just that's a scandalous lie. But the uh, that achievement, going for it, I wrote this blog, and, I, and then I got a message from uh, Al, which was basically like, "Hey, do you fancy coming to write some stuff for us?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." And then we that was how we met. So good times, but also I hate it. It's one of the worst achievements. I hate it more than Mile High Club, but I haven't even got that one. So. Because it yeah. just broke me mentally. But thankfully, they took it out of the Master Chief collection. It's not in there, so we didn't have to do oh, it. Oh, really? Oh, they should yeah. have kept it. They I should have kept glad it. Glad they didn't. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one it was day, because of your blog. They were like, you know what? Let's take that out. I don't know yeah. if I have that power. Uh, if I had that I power believe to... You. Well, if I did, <laughs> then Halo Infinite would work by now. True. True. <laughs> Jamie's constructive user feedback. This yeah. fucking achievement sucks. Bogs, yeah. get it out. <laughs> My constructive feedback at this point would just be fix it and then just me swearing <laughs> for 20 minutes and then the sound of me diving through a plate glass window, I think. But <laughs> but yeah, it went really Not well. Good. It was really good fun. Uh, I'm already planning the next one and it's going to be worse for my both my physical and mental <laughs> health. So. But more on that in the, in the weeks to come, I think. Oh man! Oh man! <laughs> no, it was really fun. The bit of it that I saw was was good fun. We 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 tend to get some interesting chat when we stream. Like we've we've got some some fun followers who talk nearly as much bollocks as I do. So <laughs> it's usually that's a, a lot. Yeah, viewers, yeah, it, that's it, a it, lot. <laughs> it it takes some doing to keep up. So yeah, we usually get some good. Uh, I, I'm loath to use the word banter, but because <laughs> I hate another word I don't like. Uh, but yeah, we definitely get some good some good chatter going on in the uh, in the stream. Gaming is all about the bands, Jamie. Come Strong bands. Oh, love the bands. Mad bands. Oh. <laughs> peng bands. Oh, not peng. Oh, <laughs> God. So sorry. I'm way too old to be using that slang. Let's be fair. I know. I know. Damn so, the youth so, of today. <laughs> bants and poggers is that your, like your two most hated words like urban slang bants and poggers probably probably <laughs> the, the only thing that's worse there's there's one thing that's worse and i'm just gonna anyone who does this i'm, I'm not calling for you to be flogged through the streets but if it happens i'm <laughs> yes, not gonna are. be sad um is people <laughs> who and, and and one of my friends does this bless him we love him but is people who will leave a voice chat and say RBRB. 
I'm like, oh you haven't saved any fucking time. <laughs> it's three one-syllable words. You've just said three syllables. So you could have said, I'll be right yeah. back. But was it too difficult yeah. for you? Is that too many? Is, <laughs> is that too complex just, of linguistics? I can get like, on board with this. Yeah. I yeah. can get on board with this, Jamie, because yeah. I hate people who, who speak in acronyms all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no reason. It's like you're actually taking your, your Twitter message or back in the day where it was your text messages, which were character limited, and you're using that as in like emails, in conversation, IRL, in real yeah. life. No. As opposed to what life? <laughs> All life is real. Why do you have to clarify as in real life? Uh, it's, it, oh my God. It's, it's, yeah. it's like nails on a chalkboard it, when, when I hear that. It's sickening. It's, the other one is people who use LOL, right? Well, it's, who say LOL. Now there's, <laughs> there is a way to oh, do the it. Lows, for the lows, Jamie. For the lows. I really enjoy yeah. saying it with a, with, a, with a big old lick of irony all over it. Absolutely. <laughs> like someone says something that's supposed to be funny and it's not, and you yeah. look at them and just go, LOL. LOL. And like, yeah, you know, that, that's fine. Right? That okay. works. <laughs> but it's when people will sit there and you say something and they go, <laughs> LOL. And I'm like, you, you, you laughed already. You literally oh, laughed disgusting. out loud. Oh, and then you fucking Ill. told me you laughed out loud. Are there loud. people that do that? Really? I have heard it in conversation. Oh. I actually oh. was sat, wow. genuinely sat in a bar one night, and I heard two people talking, and one of them laughed and said lol to the other one. And I was sat, and I, I have no chill sometimes, and I was sat, and I just turned around and just went, no. Sometimes. <laughs> Permanently. From across the bar. No. Yeah, I just looked like, no. And they looked up at me, and I just started shaking my head. I got some weird fucking looks that night, but they earned it. Not okay. Oh. Not charming. Wow. Wow. <laughs> let's take a direction. Anyway, let's yeah, get on so, to gaming chat. Yeah, gaming gaming games, chat, yeah. everybody. Holy shit. So we will jump ahead to um, the last topic, actually, and then we'll, we'll circle back. So I want to talk about the Callisto Protocol, still my most anticipated game this year. I know Ragnarok is getting all of the the reviews and, and the attention right now, obviously, and, you know, justify, justify. We'll get to that. But the Callisto Protocol, for me, is still the one this year that looks proper banger next gen and it's been cancelled parentheses in japan <laughs> it hasn't been cancelled entirely it's only been cancelled in japan and this is unfortunate like seriously unfortunate if you're in that region and we're really looking forward to a kick-ass looking horror game but it seems it's just a bit too freaking violent for the japanese market and i gotta i really gotta praise the developers and the publishers for not forcing the developers to say mm. guys you gotta rein this shit back in because it's too fucking mental for this <laughs> market these poor japanese audiences can't handle it and at the same time japanese horror is some of the scariest shit i've ever seen yeah yeah and it's like really real, like really really they're, 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 they draw the line here and i was wondering if it was and obviously to get both of your opinions on this do you think it's because it's very visually like grotesque and horrible rather than very like psychological horror, deeply disturbing stuff. And this this photorealistic as opposed to anime yeah. gore and violence. You know? That was when my brain went immediately when you were like, oh, is it because it's like thriller versus yeah, actual, you know, physically seeing something. I think maybe the the problem lies in the photorealism. Because, like, as you say, some anime, some manga is fucking extreme. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. they can handle their shit. I think, like, it must be something to do with the photorealism. It'd be really interesting to hear more about why. Um, but the one thing that really pinged for me was that th there's a sentence in their, um, uh, their tweet that they sent out. Um, and it says, we hope everyone in Japan will understand. And I'm like, I guarantee they won't. There'll be some really grumpy people. Oh, some yeah big horror fans some people that have been anticipating this as much as all three of us are who will be very unhappy and i wonder if they'll be able to somehow get access to the english version of it or something like that It'll be, be able to play it like copies or something like that yes. like like, uh, like back in the days of uh, prohibition and, and yep. moonshine will be, and they'll be easies and stuff yeah. exactly they'll be swapping <laughs> kidneys for the game out there in japan um oh, i yeah i'm i'm really gutted for the Japanese for this like that that really sucks because like you say it's still second to Ragnarok for me but it is it's like a very 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 close second yeah. I'm super psyched for this game so yeah it sucks I hope that means yeah. it's absolutely 
like horrifying. That's exciting as well. So it kind of it's a good publicity thing for for the English speaking oh, yeah. people who will get to play it. Yeah. I I I've pre-ordered this on Xbox, but then a whole bunch of like combat videos and deep dives were coming out the, this kind of past couple of weeks or past week or so. And it was an interview I saw on, on Game Informer actually with the combat designer for the game. And he was talking specifically about the one of the segments of it, about the haptics for the PS5 edition. And it made me think, fuck, I should maybe should have bought the PS5 edition because one of the the phrases, and, and I'm paraphrasing and butchering his words here, so don't hold me verbatim to it. But they wanted you to feel like when when the main character um like swings the the baton at the enemies and things like that they wanted you to feel like legs and arms snapping through the haptics <gasps> and i'm thinking fuck that sounds so like awesome but also i don't know if i want to feel that in my in my hands it's like oh my god that just it looked so crunching and brutal and now i can feel how <laughs> crunching and brutal it is so I mean, it's exciting for sure, yeah. but oh, I'm like, oh god, should I, should I, should I change my pre-order to to the PS5 and then just for, just for the haptics because everything yes. else is going to be pretty much parity. But oh my god, I I would do it, and this, this that almost makes me want to get a PS5 because I want to feel <laughs> bones snap. Like I, and that sounds terrible, and I'm not I'm not a violent You'll human being. Take that out of context. But, yeah, that'll be if that ends up clipped, I'm fucked. But it's no because that's that's cool. I mean, that's so cool. And Very we, cool. We play yeah. video games to do the stuff we don't do in real life, and so we're supposed to. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I um I can only assume that it is incredibly realistically gory because I was sat when I when I read that piece that you sent us about it being cancelled in in Japan. My first reaction was, how the fuck does anything get cancelled in Japan? I have played some weird <laughs> shit, and I have watched some weird shit. Yeah. And I was, but it is, it's yeah. always very over the top. Because my first thought was Battle Royale, and I was thought, well, there's, mm. there's fountains mm. yep. of blood. But then that's the point. There's literally fountains of blood. It is always yeah. done, so it's ridiculously over the top to drive home the point of how violent this is. But it's also not realistic. You cannot... Like, I find it hard with Japanese horror or action to sit there and be like, oh, God. Like, you're normally like, fuck, wow, because it's a spectacle. Yeah. So whereas if something is far more visceral and true to life, then it's going to... I, I, you know, that must not be a market for it over there. Um, but they'll get imports, because I'm sure there is some... There, there is a loophole with importing games that you can get around censorship. I'm sh uh, There's something I read about... Um, I can't remember exactly the, the the rules behind it, but I know that that was how they got away with some stuff because Australia historically has, has banned a ton of games over the years for, for not meeting oh, yeah. their censorship standards. Very much. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're mm -hmm. super strict, actually, that region. Yeah. 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 Um, so it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm sure they'll find a way, and chances are they'll eventually, you know, it'll eventually make it over there, I suspect, as well. But... Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely yeah, when a shame. PS5 graphics start to look like a potato, they'll probably release the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to that level. Yeah, like w everyone can play Carmageddon now, but back in the day, we weren't allowed because oh. it was far too. Yeah, I remember. I think it was the German market had to. They removed all of the people and replaced them with robots. Zombies, I think it was. It was, oh, it was zombies, and there was one. That, there was one region that replaced them with robots, mm -hmm. and there was one replaced them with zombies. So the blood was all green and things like that. And <laughs> oh yeah, but good old good old UK, UK. We had completely uncensored original <laughs> Carmageddon, and yeah, we did. Oh, it was crazy. That, that, I loved that game on the uh, on when I was a PC gamer back in the nineties. I used to play it religiously. I loved it. Yep, the one that looked like a Corvette that had the, like the Razorback Razor. Right down the middle of its um of its yeah. and hood and everything. Oh, so cool. It was an awesome game. Played that for <laughs> hours and hours with friends. We used to have lab parties for it. But yeah, it's yeah. the one that always but... pops to mind when I think about the banning of stuff in different countries. The fact that, you know, eventually like it it there were workarounds, there were imports. Eventually yeah. it came to the market. So yeah. hopefully well, it won't I mean, be even, too long. even recently 
like the the Wolfenstein games, the modern Wolfenstein mm, games, they mm-hmm. they get banned in in Germany, or not banned in Germany, but the 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 any any depiction of a swastika obviously gets re- removed, replaced, or whatever. And I was thinking, how the, how would that work in a Wolfenstein game? Because it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what are they replacing it with? And now I, I I actually want to play that version just to see what it's like. But what's interesting is well, made that instant that use case made me think of uh, the Killzone series because Killzone is essentially space Nazis. Like the the enemies in there are space Nazis, so they've got their own um, iconography and things like that. It's not swastikas; it's, it's other things. You're thinking, well, they've probably just done something like that. They've switched the, switched the swastika out for other emblems and things like that. But it's basically like these fuckers are horrible. You need to wipe them out to save humanity and all that. And they're just kind of like switching over, switching the, the iconography over to um, to get around the, the censorship. But um, no, Kills, Kills is very, very much like that. And uh, I don't think that had any problems, even though everybody knows, okay, these guys are space Nazis. It's basically like the Nazi, the, the Nazi yeah. army, but we're fighting them in space by, by another... Mm-hmm. Um, clothing iconography and that kind of thing mm-hmm. but it's like censorship is so weird and you think what's going to get blocked what's going to get passed and mm. this callisto protocol one i think really kind of like scunnered all three of us like, like really this got this mm. got blocked wow mm. okay yeah it definitely <laughs> took me by surprise i mean I, is it any time any i don't think i'll ever believe that anything could get cancelled in japan because i've played <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> And that is the weirdest, oh, most oh, bad oh. shit game I've ever picked up and experienced. Like, Dude, I'm sat there solving yeah. a puzzle with a giant, like, headless baby floating past in the moment. Like, this is bizarre <laughs> at best. <laughs> and then they turn around and go, oh, there's a bit too much blood in that one. I'm like, a bit too much blood? Forget, at least blood's yeah. real. Like, I've had yeah, that's, that's what you draw the line. six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Bless. But I know. No, Whew. Well, hopefully, hopefully, uh, Japanese gamers um, will be able to get their Callisto Protocol fixed somehow, mm. some way. Um, we won't, we won't be condoning any illegal copies, but hey, do we got to do? I suppose. Anyway, quickly moving on, let's talk about Project Canis Majoris. That is actually a full remake of the original Witcher game, um, which came out way back in two thousand seven, and it's going to be made in Unreal Engine five. So just those two statements get me kind of salivating because I'm a, I'm a huge Witcher fan. I never obviously played the first one because it was PC only way back then. And it was a really unknown niche, um, Eastern European, um, tiny developer, um, based on a series of books, which were unknown really outside of Poland. And here we are today, the mega franchise that, um, Henry Cavill is, is abandoning them son of a bitch because he's got to go play <laughs> he's got to go play superman of course superman. and a bunch of other stuff and um you know starring in the new enola holmes uh movie but this is hugely exciting i know sarah's a huge uh witcher witcher fan so i'll let you take the lead on this one what are your thoughts sarah oh uh, this is so cool i'm so excited for this i think that We've been talking a lot about things that are getting remakes like in the last few episodes. Um, And this is kind of perfect for me because I didn't play the first game, nor the second game, actually. So I'm hoping that they go ahead and do a remake of that. And then I can play all of them in their full fancy prettiness. Um, But I'm I'm super, super psyched for this. I, What's really good about The Witcher 3, though, is that it does this thing at the start where you can kind of answer a few questions to say you know how do you yeah. how would you have played the game a la mass effect as well if you haven't played the the previous ones to sort of determine who's still around what your relationships are like with people and it'll be nice to actually play the game and have some context for some of the choices i made <laughs> and maybe go oh i don't know if i should have said that or should have aligned with that person um so i'm very very excited for this game and also yeah. unreal engine 5 yes please very oh, exciting. It's going to be so pretty. It's going to be gonna so, be so pretty. pretty. I, it's, it's funny because The Witcher 1 was so jank and it, it looks horrible by today. Like Even even <laughs> oh, if no. you stack up against 2007 games, it looks fucking awful. Like It looks <laughs> really bad, even by 2007 standards. So they're going to, they, they have to remake it, rebuild everything. So it's got, obviously going to be a very long time before it comes out. Uh, I'm excited to 
because they'll have to change everything. Like the mechanics mm. were super jank back then. They'll need to really modernize every system in that game. And it's exciting to see what they can they can do with it because the jump from Witcher 1 to Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings, which eventually did come to the Xbox 360. I don't know how they did it, but it did come out and it, it was fantastic. That was, that was my first experience of Witcher games. But I remember when Witcher 2 came out on PC, this, this was like a benchmark for um like fantasy horror games rpgs but also like graphical prowess of what can be achieved in pc gaming at the time and it was it was such a jump it was massive and that's when everybody sat up and paid attention as jamie literally just sits up in a chair there. <laughs> Ti- timing bro thank you i'm following the script mate <laughs> <laughs> you're following the script exactly we rehearsed this everybody we rehearsed this i know um it, it was such such a, a jump, and everybody's like, "Okay, shit." CD Projekt Red are not this middling little Polish studio that is doing niche kind of weird games. They are punching way up above into the leagues of at the time Bioware, who 2007 Mass Effect One had come out, and they were riding high off of uh, at the time Dragon Age Origins and all those games. And they were, you know, all of a sudden, this this little studio comes up to say, we can do it, and we can do it better than the mega studios, the mega publishers. So I would love to see a remaster port or something of the second game, because I'm going to get vitriol for this probably, but I still think that Assassin, Witcher 2 is better than Wild Hunt. And I stand by that. Ooh, it's such a okay. good game. Um, for various reasons, I think it's a bit more focused. Um, combat is differently. It's a bit more um, timing based rather than hack and slashy a little bit from the from the third game. I love the open world nature of Wild Hunt, but I still think the 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 pure focus of Assassins of Kings, which are two, is is just better. And potions have I don't know the way it kind of teaches you about potions and having to research the monsters. It felt more prevalent in two than it does mm. in three even okay. though it is in three i don't know it's just maybe it's just a personal opinion but i do think it's better i've not i've not played two so i can't speak to it but i like i was obsessed with three to the point where i oh yeah just played the ever-living shit out of it i played so much of it um why well, i'm really i'm did i see something about they are getting developer support from the guys that did divinity um as well original sin 2 yeah. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Wait, where are in studios? They're they're off doing uh, Baldur's Gate three at the moment, aren't they? Yes. I don't know uh, if it's they... them though. I think it's the uh, it's they're just um uh, it's one of their gold? support devs. Yeah, uh, something like that. Fools. Yeah. Or so oh, fools theory. Fools theory. theory. Fools theory. There we fools go. Fools theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's um that's super cool because I love Divinity Original Sin two. So cool. Great game. Um, mm. So, I mean, so obviously, if they're getting support from them, it's going to be that's banging. another studio. So that's good. another studio and series that completely changed gamers' expectations of what a fantasy RPG can be. Mm-hmm. Because at the time, you remember at the time it was all, Bioware was the king of like the um, the Baldur's Gate games, the Dragon Age games. We had uh, Blizzard, obviously, with the Diablo games. It was mm. really those two, those two powerhouses. And then, obviously, various decisions and uh, misfires. Later, we get new studios kind of coming up to say, actually, we can do a better Diablo. We can do a better Baldur's Gate. We can do a mm. better fantasy Dragon Age style of game. And, and these are these new franchises which came out of those kind of um, like like phoenixes from from the from the pyre from the fire. Yeah. And we we got Witcher. We got um, Divinity: Original Sin. So that's hugely exciting, obviously, for that. And um, Oh, I, I, we're still supposed to be getting a, a next gen remake of Wild Hunt this year. They're mm. still standing to it's coming this year, but it's almost December and there's been nothing about it. I'm still hopeful. That yeah, they were very come. ambitious with their um with all their announcements they did, didn't they? Um, yeah, yeah. It's going to be really. I mean, I said it at the time. It's going to be really interesting to see how much are they how much they actually follow through with. Um, you know, I I, I know. personally I'm fine with them being like super ambitious and saying we're gonna do all of this 
in six years, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but like I would I would rather they just take the time, make the game good and yeah. release it when it's ready and good. Like I yeah. don't really want to play They should have learned. They should learn from I think they have. Cyberpunk, I think they have. So. They've uh, yeah. well I they'll, they'll, I mean that I wrote that trilogy announcement of like the sequel trilogy which isn't mm-hmm. isn't this thing here. I don't think it includes this. So there's no obviously time frame on this remake. Yeah. Uh, but again, if they have to delay it, then who like who cares? Honestly, who cares? Just don't do another cyberpunk. And exactly. I don't think they will. I think they're like, we cannot do another cyberpunk. <laughs> you can't we, afford it. Yeah, oof, don't do that. <laughs> no way. Never going to happen. Our, our reputation will be destroyed if we do that again. Mm. But, um, I'm excited the, for this. And That's the one worry, I suppose, with them turning around being super ambitious is did they do it because they were like, hey, we got dragged across hot coals for what we did with cyberpunk so yeah. we weren't necessarily yeah. going to announce this stuff that we had coming out but we need to claw back some rep points so mm. that's possible a, for like, sure. a, mark, it, it's a you know it, it, it's a marketing thing isn't it? it's like right what can we do to garner praise um Sort of. Th- I mean, let's face it. I think everyone in the game world has a praise kink because, like, we need people <laughs> to tell us we're doing good. And yeah. uh, but it's true. Like, so they're going to turn around and say, "Right, we're we're going to do all of this. We're going to do it in six years." And now people are excited for CD Projekt Red again, where they were a little bit like, "You bastards!" Mm. Like, Cyberpunk yeah. wasn't what I wanted. And all of this. So it doesn't mean they can't deliver on it, but it just means. Yeah. The, my only concern would be that if they then get a delay that they didn't foresee that screws with their timetable, that people are going to be back to, yeah, bastards, which is a shame yeah. for them because they're trying yeah. really hard to do something good. So. Yeah. I mean, it shows you how cutthroat the, these mega projects really are. It's like they, mm. they, they rushed, they forced, um, put it on hardware it should never have been on, put it out, and it was it was a mess. It was a, it was I mean it was a mess on PC anyway, but at least you could get it to run fairly well. But then all of that goodwill from years of the Witcher games and fan service and not um, not having DRM and things like that and and the GOG store and everything, they were like the the poster child for these are our favorite indie studio of all time because they're gamers first they they put out banger titles they respect the gamers yada yada and then cd project uh, sorry cyberpunk completely decimated that totally mm-hmm. decimated that and that's one project okay it's a huge project and then then they they fixed it all and things like that but again that's major brand damaging yeah and mm-hmm. a lot of studios w- would not come back from that and they obviously have come back from it which is great because no i don't i don't want to see cd uh, project red go under for something like that at all i don't want to see no. any studio go under for 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 making a mistake on on that scale but then they get to say as, i think you're right jamie it's like okay now we need to get what we had back from mm. from and if there's one franchise that's going to do it for us it's the witcher franchise because we know fucking everybody loves the witcher yeah and we've got we're still riding high from the netflix show and that's, that's doing really well and then we're people know and want sequels but what about the very first game? Let's we reinvent the first game as well. So this has got people buzzed again and talking about CD Projekt in a favorable light and excitement for what these games could look like and where they could go and all that kind of awesome stuff, which, which again, we're excited just, just talking about it and thinking about it. And that's oh, great yeah. for, you know, share values. For the for the for the shareholders as well as the fans, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm that's sure important. That's yeah. important. If, they, if they're not happy, the studio gets shut down. So yeah, that's important. Yep. <laughs> it shows we are as a community somewhat fickle. Like game, gamers can be incredibly fickle. I mean, you, you look at I I know I constantly you know partly for comedic value rant about Halo, but I am very disappointed with the direction that they've taken. Um, but I will keep giving them a try. That's the thing. When they do actually release campaign co-op, I will play it. When an update comes out for the multiplayer, I will try it. Yeah. When they when they release another Halo game in the future, I'll, I'll be there with bells on, ready to play because it's it's the franchise I love. And I, the studio was a a modicum of trust for me. They've eroded it with the decisions they've made because it starts to because eventually there comes a point where mm-hmm. you have to look at it and think this company is going in a different direction. They're no longer doing what I wanted to do. But yeah. I have seen a subset yeah. of the community be like, "What? Well, no, no campaign on the multiplayer is not Halo Three multiplayer. Get fucked up, gone." And then that's it, mm. and they're done. They're not coming mm. back. 
you know. But yeah, that's too extreme. Yeah, way too mm, extreme. If you show them some bells and whistles in a trailer in six months' time, they'll be like, "Hey, it was the best thing ever again," and we'll play <laughs> nothing but for six months. Is yeah. it the, the ups and downs and the roller coaster of the the fickle nature of certain parts of the gaming community is dizzying at times. Mm. Mm-hmm. That must be so, really stressful for for devs, you know, because yeah. obviously you you want to make something that is, especially if you're a dev that is like gamers first, players first. These are the most important you know part of our game that must be so stressful dealing with how fickle we can be i like to think that i'm not really that fickle generally speaking i'm way more likely to give something a go and actually be quite generous with when i play a game even if it's a little bit janky um but yeah it must be really tough i i don't envy community managers having to deal with stuff like that <laughs> no well, yeah totally i mean jamie and i've I've talked about this in the past as well it's, it's usually a, an extremely vocal minority and mm. then the majority are probably like us sarah where we're, we if it's something disappoints us we don't get on and, and start calling out death threats toward <laughs> developers yeah. we're like oh okay that's a shame and then we'll move on yeah and it'll be very and even if we love it we may get on Twitter and praise it, but even then, I've a lot of people were like, if they love something, they probably won't talk about it. And then it's like that's that silence is means like, are you doing a is it is it good? Is it well received? There's not mm. always that feedback, but there's definite feedback from this ultra toxic minority that will say, We hate you, this is terrible, what have you done to our franchise? Blah, blah, mm. blah, blah, blah. And that's just awful. And it is that ex that extreme, that kind of bipolar. Um uh, like action or or conduct for for the industry and, and it's and it's awful it's just awful whereas mm. the majority of people are just like yeah okay and then they'll move on to the next thing and then they'll maybe love the next thing or they'll dislike the next thing and they'll, they'll keep on bouncing because there's so much stuff that we get to look forward to and uh and one of those is the witcher one remake coming some sometime we all don't know when something it's, it's coming it's coming anyway okay entropy center review segment i'm gonna i'm gonna take this one obviously i was very fortunate enough to get given a code by evolve pr so big thank you to that um the game came out as of recording it came out yesterday thursday thursday it came out and i had it for about a week or so before then let's just get it out of the way straight away okay this game is fucking awesome i loved it (laughs) That's my recommendation. I loved it. And I'm, I'm, I am i haven't finished it yet. I'm about chap, like act 10 or 11 or, or thereabouts. So it's, it's bigger than I was expecting. It's longer than I was expecting. I'm like, shit, this, this keeps going. But um, it's one of those games where if you like puzzle games, you're always in the mood for a new puzzle room. And it's, it's like that. It's that kind of mentality where it's like, you know what? I'm just going to take a quick break. I'm going to do a puzzle. I'm going to do one of the puzzle rooms. And I've been loving it. I've been playing it with a big fucking smile on my face because it is, <clears throat> and there's no way to avoid it, it is Portal by another name, okay? And I don't mean that in a, a derogatory way to the developers or anything like that. It's, it's impossible to avoid. The aesthetic is so similar. The The concept and the premise is, so, not the premise, the concept is so similar. The premise of this game is super interesting. It's got a really kind of riveting story behind everything is like what is this entropy center why does it exist where does it exist all this kind of stuff is super interesting and i'm not going to go into too much detail because i don't want to spoil it for anybody who is considering picking this up but i will say that portal 3 is only one half maybe even a third of this game's biggest influence okay it is actually far more influenced for me anyway by let me take you on a little journey a little story let me set the scene we're going to go back 20 years to the year 2002 okay the original xbox has launched it's been out a year everybody's playing Halo combat evolved with the master chief 2001 the next year 2002 a new what i thought at the time anyway a new mascot for the xbox gets unleashed into the audience okay and it's a little ginger cheshire cat called blinks and he is a time sweeper, okay? And it is a puzzle game that looks like Conquer, but you have time manipulation powers and you have to solve puzzles in like a 3D, 3D platforming adventure game, but it's all using time controls. 
Now, back in this day, the Xbox was the very first console to have a hard drive, right? And this game was innovative because it used the hard drive that no other game had ever used before. What happens in Blinks? You record your actions in order to solve puzzles. And then you can record yourself. So then you've got one, like the main one that you control and then the one you have just controlled. So there's like two of you to activate two switches, things like that. You can pause time. You can rewind time. That was Blinks. That was the premise of Blinks the Time Sweeper. Fast forward 20 years to the Entropy Center. Time manipulation is at the heart of puzzle solving and this game. And that's what made me think of, of Blinks the Time Sweeper because this game is so clever. I would say it's maybe not quite as clever as the Portal games. The Portal games exist on another plane for me because they were so original. They were so witty and sharp and clever. And there's so many other elements to creating creating physics and space puzzles and, and solutions. Whereas Entropy Center is time-based puzzles, physics-based puzzles, but there's still other elements that you get to interact with as well. There is the typical... Um, the companion cubes there's there's blocks in in this game there's the laser blocks there's the blocks that spit out um light bridges there's things like that there's jump pads just like in portal okay but slightly different here but the fact that it, you have to use and manipulate time to solve them rather than spatial awareness for creating portals which is what made portal so interesting this does its own thing because it's time manipulation. And my God, some of the puzzles are super easy. You'll just see it. And it's like, okay, I, I know what to do this. I can speed run through this in a few seconds. Others, I was like, how the fuck do I solve this? How, <laughs> what is going on here? And there was a quite a few of those, but a lot of them was like, okay, I everything's clicking. I know the physics of the world. I know the rules of the world. I can blast through this. I know what to do. And then other times you're thinking, I think I've just solved this and I'm the only one that solved it this way because it's because it's physics-based and time-based. It's like, I think I've just solved this and no other fucker has done, been able to do it this way. And that is a feeling which is so palpable and just makes it so enjoyable. One example, uh, I will get to in just a second, but to, to explain it because it's time-based and what actually makes it a real like spaghetti noodle of a brain situation is you have to solve the puzzle in reverse. So you solve it as you would typically solve it, but then you have to put it into action. You have to do it backwards. So when you rewind time, the solution is forwards. Okay. So that was just oh, like, Jesus. what the fuck? What uh. the fuck? <laughs> you know? And it really does mess with your mind. It's like, Oh my God, I, I got to solve it, but then I have to solve it backwards to then, rewind time it's it's the correct order of sequences and it plays out in the right order of sequences so the the end of the solution needs to be the first thing you do so and and and, and domino effect it backwards like that and i loved that and there was things like okay i have to get this block up here but i'm down there the block is down there i need the block to get me up there how do i get both of us up there and there was there was one level which I which I this is the one that I thought I've solved this in a way that nobody solved this. That's probably not the case. <laughs> but there was there was three levels, different levels of different heights, and I had I had two jump pads, and I had to get both jump pads up to the third level. So what I did was obviously you I placed the one of the jump pads at the far edge of um, these kind of stepped. So there's, at the far edge, it's recessed and then it's up to the very top level. And then off to the side, it's more stepped up. So I used the second jump pad to jump up. And then I managed to, I'm not going to explain the, the, the solution too much because I want you to solve it as well. But the gist is I managed to get up to the, the third level with one of the jump pads, but the second jump pad is down on the last, the bottom of the level. I was like, how the hell do I get the third one or sorry, the second jump pad up to this top level with me without undoing everything I've just done. And I'm completely stuck. I was like, what do I do? So then I was like, oh, okay, hold on. I have time control. I can, I can go back through time, right? 
So you yourself doesn't go back through time. The objects go back through time. So what I did is I had the one that was up there with me. I dropped it over the edge so it would hit the jump pad at the very bottom and both of them jumped up because they're both it's two jump pads. So both of them shot up. So I managed to grab one, okay, and then I put that back on the top level. But then the one that was down there that jumped up because I dropped a thing on it, I rewound time and it was just like an elevator going all the way back up. It, oh, the thing just in slow awesome. in, in slow motion it traveled all the way back up through time so I could just pick it out of the air. And then that was up in the top level with me. And I used physics and time to say how do I get these two jump pads up here when I can only get one up quite easily, but how do I get the second one up? And you're just like, oh, I can drop this. It will shoot up because the other one hit it. And then I can re- I can rewind time for both of them because at, at various points in time, they were both up to a level high enough for me to grab them. Stuff like that. So fucking cool and so rewarding. Yeah. And it's like a brain no, spin. It does. It <laughs> does. <laughs> And if if you are a fan of Portal, if you're a fan of puzzle games, this is a this is an easy easy recommendation. It's not that expensive. I don't know the actual cost of it, but it's, it's like a kind of budget price title. It looks amazing. I was playing on Xbox Series X. I didn't have any real performance issues. There was one time where it was a bit stuttery, but I, I couldn't explain why. It was like there was a waterfall in one of the levels. And I was going across a bridge. It was actually one of the least complex environments, but it did stutter a wee bit there. But for the most part, it's been running really, really fast, really smoothly. Loads super fast, so that's great. Um, the writing, whilst may not quite hitting the the highs of, of Portal 2, is very good. It's very good. The little gun that we talked about a couple of episodes ago that talks to you, very funny, very sarcastic, very witty really really good um job there from from the voice acting and from the writing team again it's got loads of personality there's emails that you can access from um from the these abandoned work terminals from the staff that were there check them out read all of them as much as you can because they are Mm. very funny and they give backstory and lore into the world and there was there, there was one email which which had me cracking up because the staff workers are obviously getting bored um, about being in this facility and they're trying to think out ways of keeping things fresh again. So they were like, I have just finished my all time. And this is something that we probably talk about as well. I've just finished my favorite TV show of all time. I wish I could watch it again for the very first time. And they're like, hang on a minute. I have an entropy gun. I can just rewind time when I, ha- when I had no memory of it. Let's do that. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, I would and, absolutely and they, do that. Oh, yes, and then please. They, can watch, they can watch their favorite TV show all over again and get the same euphoria of, of, of um, getting, getting to experience that for the first time all over again. That's, that's very clever. I like that. <laughs> yeah. The little, little kind of narrative touches in the emails and things like that. And just world building, padding it out is, is just so cool. And I just had such a great time with it. I would say it's probably closer to a Portal 1 than a Portal 2 uh, in the sense that it maybe doesn't do enough of making the puzzles super difficult and super challenging where, okay, the reins are off. We'll, we'll take off the, um, the, the training wheels and here's all the elements you now know how to use. Go solve a puzzle in however way you want to. I haven't come across that kind of stuff just yet. It's still a little bit on not not on rails that's not the right term but it still feels a little bit we're not sure if we should give you everything to make something that is super hard and super challenging just yet and it's like okay I'm, you know I've, i'm a few hours in now i've done loads of these challenge rooms i'm ready for it to just say okay give me that holy shit moment to say jesus christ i need to use absolutely everything in the arsenal now and a creative way to solve these challenge rooms and, and move the plot forward. I will say mm. though, in terms of the plot, there is a moment, just like in the first portal, or maybe it's portal two, we were like, holy shit, this is this is like the behind the curtain reveal as to what's going on. Mm. And it was really satisfying. I really enjoyed it. You might 
guess it um, earlier if you're playing it. I didn't because I'm, I'm, I'm dumb like that. I don't pay any attention until somebody actually hits me over the face with it. It's like, this is what's happening. I was like, ah, okay. That's what's happening. That was awesome. <laughs> but it's so good. As a negative, I will say in terms of like accessibility options or just general customization options, there uh, there's nothing here in terms of graphical setting on Xbox. And there might be different on PC. In terms of graphical settings, accessibility options, there's there's nothing. It's like super bare bones. Like I wanted to turn off the motion blur because sometimes it can be a little bit aggressive, but you can't do that. You can't turn off film grain or anything like that. Um, which is, you know, it is what it is. It's a small team, I guess. It's a little bit unfortunate. But that might make or break the experience for you if you're thinking about picking this game up. But for me, it was it was I was just like, okay, that's fine. I'm not having any problems with it because I'm fortunate enough to be, you know, able-bodied and I can work around pretty much any, any situation um, in terms of controls. But overall, banger, banger little game. I um, highly recommend, especially if you're needing a portal fix. Highly recommend. Sounds great. Sold. Yeah. Sold. I'll take it. <laughs> It's just so much. It's just, it's just got a vibe to it. That's just like, yeah, this is making me smile all the way throughout. And when you get that, I just solved that. I am so fucking smart because I solved that. <laughs> it's that, even though you're not at all, but you just feel so clever. Yeah, <laughs> love that. And again, that makes me feel like that. It's all good. Yeah. No. So it's on my list. It's getting picked up because I mean, Paul's just such a a game and it looks incredible and when you mentioned blinks over that pretty much sealed the deal because i loved that game a fantastic retitle so yep I'll i've take never it. heard of that before mm. was it in was it an xbox exclusive it, it was an xbox exclusive yeah. yeah yeah and it's one of those games that like microsoft are sitting on so many potential a- uh, mascots for their for their oh. for their platform it's unbelievable and Blinks never got a sequel. I don't know why. I think it did really well. It reviewed really well. Everybody was like floored because it was utilizing the hard drive for the very first time that no mm. game had ever done before. It's like, hang on a minute. This entire game has been recording my playthrough of this level. And even when you even when you complete that that level, it will give you a replay of everything that you did, like behind the behind the scores that you got, behind your rating and stuff. You can actually see your full playthrough of that level just replaying like a, like mm. a VCR. And at the wow. time, like nothing had done that before. And mm, mm. it's such a shame that it never, never got revived because God damn it should, it could be really, really yeah, good. Sounds awesome. But today it is strange. And I, I could, I could talk about this for hours. I'm not going to, but just briefly that, like you said, they are sat on so much because blinks was great. Cameo was fantastic. Although I still maintain that the reason that we didn't get another cameo is because if I hear you'll find me in the whatnot one more time, <laughs> I will end everything. So, uh, but they were great. And even there were, there were some like, it's slightly fringe titles that did very clever stuff with the Xbox that no one seems to have come back to as much. It's like more, mm. WWF Raw back in the day, where or WWE Raw, I should say, where mm. it recorded bits of your matches so that you could use those matches to build your own Titanfall video and you could have your own music that you had on the Xbox as your entrance music. Yeah. So I used yep. to come mm. into some metal track that I was into at the time with shots of me flipping backwards through the air because I made a character <laughs> that looked like me, like me if I lost about 200 pounds and actually you know, didn't skip leg, arm, and chest day. but And, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. So there's loads of stuff that they did, and you could see this this building of, like, oh, this is really clever. And at some point they just sort of went, eh, nah, forget all of that. And I know. Sad. I, know. I, sad. I, st- I still want Brute Force to come back, Jamie. Oh! Brute, Brute Force, the four-player co-op yes. game that everybody thought was going to be the Halo killer and it never did it never turned out to be that at all it was, that it was... was way before Gears of War way before Gears of War yep and that should the, have um... that should have been a oh, oh what was it the, the Zengar the, the alien guy who would yell this and then everything would go thermal vision and he would just charge through them being a badass yeah, we played yeah. that by accident because we had run out of conflict games to play 
me and three of my mates were playing through the Conflict series, so we did Desert Strike 1 and 2, and then we did Conflict Global Storm, which was crap, and the Vietnam one, and the, they were great. And then we'd run out, and we were like, what's this brute force yeah. thing? Well, we'll give it a go. I just fell in love. And then we were like, oh, brilliant. Well, they're bound to make another one of those. And someone at Xbox yeah. went, this was wildly successful and did some clever stuff. You want to make another one? Yeah, fuck it, too much work. <laughs> Ripped it out of them. Let's try it out Hexic 6. Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> Sad times. Sad times. But anyway, great times ahead, Sarah. God yeah. of War. Ragnarok. Oh my <gasps> god, it's imminent. It is imminent. But unfortunately, so are the spoilers. Mar. Apparently, some fucker of a shop or online whatever had broken street date and were releasing the game like two weeks early what the what? hell why can't why can't i shop at these places yeah, send God it damn to it. Me. yeah i'll have it two weeks early but anyway that led to a lot of spoilers kind of going up online people who are just fuckers putting stuff up on youtube spoiling the story and what's even worse than that this is a major pet peeve of mine because it happens all the time to this day People putting spoilers in thumbnails, so it just you don't even get a, Ugh, you don't yeah. even have to you don't have to look like click on the link. It's just in the thumbnail and it's something spoiled. Mm -hmm, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff's going on. Corey Bar Corey Barlog obviously got on Twitter to say this is fucking stupid. Fans shouldn't have to dodge spoilers. The Sony army was trying to shut down as much as possible. This is a huge thing. But to turn this around from a from a negative into a positive. The game is now out. It hasn't been spoiled for us, and hopefully it hasn't been spoiled for, for you, the listeners and the viewers. But my God, this game is apparently a fucking banger. It has been getting 10s and high 9s everywhere. 9.5 Game Informer, 10 from IGN, 9 from GameSpot, 10 out of 10 from the, the Independent. Push Game, uh, sorry, Push Square, 10 out of 10. It is unbelievably like what we, what we were hoping for. And just to read um, one of the one of the, uh, the little kind of soundbite uh, review roundup from um, from Screen Rant here, they give it a four and a half out of five, which is still awesome. Apart from reinventing a highly complex saga, God of War Ragnarok manages to reinvent itself with many highly needed improvements. These refinements eventually stack up to deliver a complete experience that makes its predecessor look archaic. Bold fucking words. Bold words there. I mean, I don't think it looks archaic at all. Um, with all of its splendor and minor shortcomings considered, God of War Ragnarok manages to set a new standard, striking the balance between profound storytelling and invigorating gameplay. <gasps> oh my god, it just sounds amazing. <laughs> and it's, it is all of a sudden top of everybody's list to be duking it out with um, the Elden Ring for, for Game of the Year. And I think, Ooh. whichever one gets it, I don't really I don't really care. I don't really mind. It's like, okay, both are worthy as hell. But seeing all of the reviews, I'm now like I'm now of the opinion, okay, I was gonna pick it up later. Now I've now I've instantly pre ordered it for launch day. I was gonna wait. But now it's like, okay, I can't wait now. Clearly it's like the greatest <laughs> game of the generation that's already just and the generation just started. So I have to pick it up. <laughs> But yeah. I need to I need to um, very quickly blast through a playthrough of of the first one, 2018, before this this drops in a week's time. I think I can do it if I just blast it on easy and just enjoy the story and blow <sighs> through it. I can That's I can shout. get through it. Yeah, I can get through it, and in a few days' time, I should be I should be uh, manageable. But anyway, Sarah, you're a, you're a huge fan of 2018. Yeah. You're hugely hyped for Ragnarok. Yeah. Take it away. Take it away. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing some uh, uh, Kratos ash grey today uh, in honour of the fact that I knew we were going to be talking nice. about it. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, I have been so excited for this since I uh, first played through the, um, the first one and uh, it was my first platinum on PlayStation because I was literally obsessed with it and I wanted to explore every inch of that world. Um, and I can still remember the getting the final trophy, which was defeating all the Valkyries, which are impossibly difficult um, and are yep. kind of like, yeah, Soulsborne level, like 
horrible and you kind of have to just keep coming back and keep coming back and get better. And I had the top level gear. I was like, I had everything ready, but it's at the end of the day, you also need to learn how these, how these things fight. And that was, I had so much adrenaline running through my system that day when I actually managed it. I was like, physically, my whole body was just shaking. I was like, ah! I think my neighbors probably at least five doors down could hear my celebration when I finally, finally got them. Oh my God. And I think the more satisfying thing was I didn't like lower my difficulty level in order to do it. Whereas I know yeah. that could have been an easy way to do it. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, oh my God, I'm so excited. And I have been dodging spoilers left, right and center. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the fact that stuff has been leaked. I, I, I don't know what the joy is in that for whoever's yeah. doing it. Like, it just it it ruins it for people that want to go into the game and experience it for the first time. Like any sensible person, like I get pissed off about that when you get, um, t- like TV show spoilers, you get film spoilers. Like there should be a reasonable amount of time for people to try and play the game yeah. before you, uh, you know, you can talk about it, talk about how excited you are about it, but like please hold off if you have any additional knowledge. Like don't. You know, I'm probably going to be that person who says, oh, my God, that one moment where the thing happens to that person. And hopefully <laughs> someone else will be able to go, oh, my God, yeah. And that's that's the only conversation I want to be having like a week after it. Um, so I, I uh, so Connor is really excited to play as well. Um, but because uh, we only have one PlayStation 5 in the house. So uh, sorry, I'm playing first. Um He's I'm basically right. I'm right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh he's um he's 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 tempted to go and like work for the day. He's like, I'm gonna like offer up to do a shift of work so I don't have to like <laughs> watch you play. So he can yeah. still have that organic like feeling of playing through it for the first time. And I was like, Yeah, that sounds like a sensible thing to do. You should definitely do that. It also means that I can just literally just be me and like build a little duvet fort on the sofa and take over the living room and be like, right, it's happening. <sighs> Oh, and I get I've got the Jotnar edition, so I'll get my little my my little really? hammer. Wow, and everything. you went Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I went all in. So I get my all my pretty little extras and everything. And I got the controller. Yeah. I think you'll find that I am a super fan. Uh, oh, next week's show, <laughs> you're gonna have to show us this stuff because uh, ha- you should have it by that point. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be lucky if you can um drag me away from the game to record the podcast to be fair yeah. so <laughs> lady lady thor will be in the house that day yeah talk about ragnarok oh i'll i'll have the camera on oh but i'll be on mute i'll be playing the game while we're having the, <laughs> while we're doing the podcast i'll come off mute every now and again to contribute but i'll be playing simultaneously yeah we'll have, we'll have to like recap <laughs> when you're off mute what are you talking about oh <laughs> i'm sorry uh, i was too busy killing thor <laughs> i'll give you my two second opinion i agree oh I disagree. <laughs> yeah, just leading back towards the mic to go, whatever you're talking about, if it wasn't God of War, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Oh, God, the fever pitch. The fever pitch is, is real. Yeah! I, I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I've been a fan of the of the series since the uh, since 3, actually. 3 was my very first one because I never ha- had... I never... I had a PlayStation 1, but I never played... Um, the original was God of War 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And then when I eventually did get a PlayStation 3, it was uh, the first one was God of War 3. And that blew my mind visually. Just visually, it looked like a Ray Harryhausen extravaganza, like Clash of the Titans or something. Because mm. it did this this weird kind of tilt shift thing. Because it was it's more it's more kind of top down, but really cool kind of um, camera work as well. You never controlled the camera, which was the big thing. But it did this like, depth of field stuff, which looked like stop motion models for the environments. And, and I loved it. I loved that aesthetic. And of course, it, it completely reinvented for, for 2018. And I was like, this is another level of gaming presentation that we had just haven't seen before. And oh my goodness, we thought The Last of Us was good. But then this came out and um, oh my God, it was like the depiction of Kratos to actually be a compassionate, emotive um, mm. character, which was just like ragey, ragey, stompy, stompy. And that was his one emotion. <laughs> kind of like Jamie, yeah. a lot of the time. 
Yeah, but um, they they showed that Kratos can actually have range and uh, this exciting new mythology. It was no longer Greek mythology; it was Norse mythology, and mm-hmm. now we're getting to witness. I I hope I assume we're actually getting to witness Ragnarok. <gasps> so, oh my god, I'm just I'm so excited to see where it can go. And Me the too. reviews. I'm trying to. I'm I'm kind of listening to reviews and reading reviews but trying not to like dipping in and stopping at certain points because i want it to all be new for me but it's everything i read is like oh my god this like what apparently what they've done with the story and how big the game is and the way they've integrated side quests and things like that uh, with the new characters that they've also introduced just sounds freaking phenomenal so Man, can we have a joint game of the year for uh, for Elden Ring and and Ragnarok then? Mm, yeah, Gosh, maybe. I don't know, but oh, definitely a special circle of hell reserved for people who spoiler stuff though. Mm-hmm. But it is it is just it, it frustrates me. Like even with the, the it's not just gaming. Obviously, it's TV, film. Even with like obviously, I watch uh, a lot of wrestling, and me and the guys will sit and watch some of. Sometimes we'll watch the events live. We'll we'll all sit there and hit press play. Thankfully, because it's live streaming, it's always a few seconds out. It gets really confusing in the mm. Discord. It's hilarious, but we'll watch it. And while we're watching it, we'll have Twitter going, and not only will fans be spoiling the live event because some people aren't going to watch it live when it's two o'clock in the morning like in the no, UK, exactly, like yeah. Starts, we'll catch up. Uh, yeah like it'll finish at like 5 a.m sometimes and wrestlemania happens over two nights now it's like eight hours the, the, at this point there's a pay-per-view every th- you know there's a four-hour pay-per-view every 30 minutes it's getting fucking ridiculous so you sat there watching it and you're watching Twitter blow up with people saying about, oh, I can't believe you won the boat. I can't believe this. And so I now have a tactic to try and, and counteract some spoilers and I do it for all sorts of stuff. Well, I will take to Twitter and spoiler the shit out of everything with stuff that is completely <laughs> irrelevant and has nothing to do with what's actually happening. So you'll see me watching it going, I can't believe Hulk Hogan's back. And people are like, wait, Hulk Hogan's back? I'm like, no. <laughs> and they're like, I don't know what to believe anymore. But you're welcome. Yeah, I've single-handedly dealt with the spoiler issue. Don't, don't. You don't have to thank me. It's okay. So yeah. but I do it with all sorts now. But it does. It frustrates me. But the worst of it is the fact that the companies themselves will spoil stuff. You will see a mm. game dev post and say, "Do you enjoy yeah. that boss fight against them?" Like, have I fucking got to it? Know. Yeah. 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 Game's been yeah, out for t- thirty cento seconds. Like, give me a minute. I know. But. Like TV is the worst for it more than mm. anything. Like weekly TV, the past few years has been really, really bad where an episode of this hit TV show will air. Started like mostly with Game of Thrones, I think. Actually, Game of Thrones kind of surfaced this like week to week. As soon as it, it airs, that all of the media publications will have a thumbnail saying, oh my God, this happened in this episode. Yep. As they're, to, to get their clicks and their traffic, it's like, come on it's just aired and not everybody can watch it and it's the same with like all the marvel shows it's the same with Mm. everything that's kind of coming out and it's just so frustrating and actually what pissed me off um uh, recently is the it's actually uh dwayne johnson the rock promoting black adam like all he was talking Mm. about was Mm. well not all he was talking about but he, he basically ruined and Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually refer to what he was doing. So I apologize if this is news to anybody that I'm now gonna spoil. But I had no idea that the end credit scene had Henry Cavill as Superman in in that. That oh, would have yeah. been a fucking amazing thing to experience unknown in the cinema. Mm-hmm. And then all of the headlines before the movies came out is talking about Henry Cavill is back as Superman because he was in this this scene in Black Adam. It's like. The movie isn't even out yet, and you're talking about this this moment, which would have been incredible for the fans to just see yeah. on their own organically. Yeah. It's like, oh, damn! Don't be a the, punt. I think it was the first <laughs> suicide, uh, not suicide squad. The first Guardians of the Galaxy, the end credit sequence. Now, right, I am. This is a spoiler. Except Guardians of the Galaxy has been out for about a decade at this point, so you know. <laughs> I think you're. Yeah, I think I think the statute, statute of limitations, of limitations has passed. Yeah. 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 Right? <laughs> The end credit sequence of that, you see Howard the Duck. 
which is an awesome little reference. Oh, yeah. What a cracking yeah. character. And he does deserve. Yeah. Now Disney Plus has got much more, you know, like comedy and esoteric stuff going on. Howard the Duck needs a series, but <gasps> yes, please, because that'd be great. But the thing yeah. that got me was they did this little end credit scene, and I remember seeing a tweet from one of the guys at Marvel, right, or or one of the actors in the film, or some someone. I can't remember who it was, but they posted saying, "Hang about for the end credit scene. It's a good one." That was it. And I was like, good, right? Make sure people stay in the cinema. Yeah, some... that's all you need. That's all Perfect. you need. Because I've sat in the cinema in Marvel films and the credits start rolling and people get up and I will genuinely sit there and go, why are you leaving? Right? Because <laughs> it, I feel bad for them. So, but he, he tweeted that and someone, like, and it wasn't a small, you know, it wasn't just a fan or either. It was like one, it was a critic or a, a news right. outlet that replied and said, I cannot believe you guys used Howard the Duck. I remember sitting there thinking, what the f- <sighs> fuck? Because if you're following both of them, and let's face it, if you're a Marvel fan, you might be following, say, James Gunn and oh, yeah, know, exactly. like, like, I- IGN, for example, or someone of yeah. that nature. Yeah. Right? And it, it wasn't them, I don't think. But that reply instantly, a lot, spoiled it. I had, I had luckily it had been out for a couple of days, and I, I that one I had gone to see sort of day one, I think. So it was like, whatever it was, I had got away with it. But I thought, well, everyone knows what that is now. Yeah. You know, golf clap. Well done. That, yeah. yeah. Absolute yeah. arse. So, yeah, very frustrating. But. So, <sighs> Western, Western reviewers, spoilers, don't do it. Yeah. No, you're, it's, it's not big, it's not stop. clever. Just stop it. Yeah. I okay. will find you. <laughs> you, you will. Jamie has a, a very specific set of skills. Oh, he does. I, he will I, find you. Well, I have a very particular lack of skills. <laughs> but I'm also stubborn and annoyed easily. So That's true. And he's like he's like um like an angry Chucky doll. <laughs> what a play. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. See? See? Don't do it. You don't want that knocking on your door at night. You really don't. Mm-hmm. That's okay. next Halloween's costume sorted. <laughs> oh, please, please. Yes, wear please. That. You that have to. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll make it. Okay. Little. We'll make this actually the, the final topic of the show. We'll we'll save uh, Wanted Dead for, for another time, actually, because I really want to talk about this one. And I think we could talk about this for quite a while. It is um the gameplay footage that's just dropped for Blight Survival. I know very little about it other than the uh, the description in the video was said, medieval zombie survival horror action roguelike. What? Love. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of genres. That's a lot. Sold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this looks this looks amazing. It looks like really quite polished, even though it was a little snippet. Mm. Um just for the for the uh, to setting the scene for the for the audience. It looks like you control a medieval knight set in i don't know a time in england english history it looked Mm -hmm. like in the countryside it had a vibe visual vibe a little bit like a plague tale but rather than france it was it was medieval england and just the fact that you're we're finally getting a like a zombie game with medieval knights it instantly feels fresh like don't tune out because it's like oh my god another another zombie game another another roguelike game another survival horror game, but Medieval Knights in this setting is instantly making it feel fresh for me. So Jamie is like at fever pitch waiting to to give his thoughts on this. So Jamie, you go first, pal. I want it. It has to release now. I need it in my life. I don't... It, it's four-player co-op, so instantly I, I, my ears prick up because anything See, I wasn't co-op... sure about that. I wasn't sure. There's a moment in the game where an NPC waves at you and you wave back, and I thought... That's too specific to be like maybe scripted for a random NPC. But then I thought, is it is that another another player? And I wasn't sure. So Jamie's well, confirming for us. Okay. The YouTube description said four player mm. um, on the video that we watched, uh, okay. or in the article, or in an article I read afterwards. But somewhere it said four player. Um, so don't I mean don't hold me to it as gospel, but that was I definitely read four player co op in the descriptor for it. Um, I hope it's four player because I'm really sick of three player co op games. But that's a rad one of the You can have two friends, yeah. and after that you're done. Right? It's just not fair. <laughs> I know. But, but the the setting is fantastic. I love the fact it very much looks like you're, you're looking at sort of plague era 
mm. British country, like you said, but English country, sorry. And you've got corpses lying about, like plague pit looking areas, yep. ruined homes. Definitely a sort of, you know, the Battle of Hastings just cut through here. Now we've got the plague, everything's bad. And uh, it looks ravaged, but the it was the you're fighting them with a sword, so you're you're mainly fighting zombies, which is obviously always makes it a little bit more like intense. And then he gets a bow and sticks an arrow through one's eye as it runs at him, and yeah. it's just yeah. and oh, oh he just signed me up. But I also like the fact that it looks like it's you're not just cutting about getting attacked by zombies because there were humans in there. Who are clearly enemies, and you have to stealth yeah. through them. Yes, and he, there are stealth kills in the game. Oh, yeah, it's just, just oh, it yeah. just looks like a. It just so, signed me up. That bit, that bit right there, I was like, awesome. I love stealth in games, but the one thing that made me question the the stealth stuff in this game is this guy is in full heavy plate armor. Is that realistic that you would be able to stealth and crouch and crawl in heavy plate armor? I don't know, but hey, fuck it. It's a game. It's going to, it looks awesome. We'll just suspend <laughs> disbelief for this. We'll just go with it. It legitimately, all I can think of at that point, because I watched it with, uh, with Eldest Child Unit and we were, we were sat talking about it and it looked fantastic. But all I could think about was uh, Pike in Critical Role. Because she, she constantly <laughs> fails stealth checks because she wears full plate. Yeah. <laughs> and I was sort of thinking, well, he rolled high because the fucker's not clanking, <laughs> not even a bit. He's just crawling <laughs> through the mud. And uh, surprisingly uh, quick on his feet when he gets up and takes out the mm. gun with the dagger. But, but yeah, no, it, I mean, it looks, you know, like you said, suspension of disbelief notwithstanding. Um, it looks fantastic. And it's it's a fresh... Uh, it's yeah, it's a very fresh take on zombies to have them in that era. You know, no firearms. Yeah, you're gonna have uh, bows, but obviously that's a a slower yeah, rate of fire. There's only so much bows, you can... crossbows, maybe maybe ballistas, things mm, like that. Mm. Maybe catapults. Yeah. if there's like a, a wave <gasps> oh. of <gasps> yes, hordes of zombies, but like or trebuchet, yes! yes, trebuchets. You know, that... oh, it's it's so cool. a trebuchet. Just just sit. Just give me a trebuchet and. Endless waves of the undead. I will just, I will sit there for hours. I will never leave my chair. I love a trebuchet. It's one of the best weapons ever developed. It's just, it is. Oh. It is. Sarah, are you? Are you clearly hyped for this as well? I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped. I mean, it. It's a great, great time to be a PC gamer, um, and also really exciting that this is a debut from this dev company. I was like trying to hunt them down and it was like no no this is this is their first ever piece and it looks gorgeous it looks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like this this beautiful yeah like you say it is like plague tale isn't it it's got this kind of like gray dark and dingy with a little pop of like green when you see a little bit of greenery the fire looks incredible in it um i i also saw that there was like uh, a moment in the gameplay trailer where they opened up a um a chest of some sort and there was like a, a hilt so i was like okay cool so we get to like customize the weapons and everything as well which sounds sick yeah. like uh, yeah i'm so excited to like slice the head off a zombie with a with a big broadsword <laughs> that's gonna be great it's gonna be so like good. if if they allow you to like properly craft your own wet like smelt your own weapons and mm. armor and stuff like that and if that's a thing in it then this this like, this could be freaking huge as a, as oh, yeah. a game and oh yeah. like i want to see your type of armor are, are you going to go ranger are you going to go heavy plate are you going to be like brienne of tarth or are you going to go like aragorn or you know it's a tough so call it's such a tough call i always find that like because i like to be right up on the front and hacking and slashing so i have to go for something quite tanky um, yeah. but i also quite like that yeah that you've got the the ranged mechanic in there as well I wonder if there are other classes well, obviously we, we've only seen this this kind of knight character at the moment but mm. I would imagine being co-op there will be defined roles potentially oh yeah the than... um the second player that you wave to um yeah. looks to me to be in slightly more 
uh, well, less armory and more kind of leather jerkin kind of vibe. Yeah. So maybe, maybe I don't know what kind of classes they're looking at, but I wonder if there's a sort of support like bard style class as well, maybe, which could be quite cool. Jamie's going to be in the corner just singing a <laughs> oh, playing fucking loot. The loot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> playing the loot. They'll be like, shush, the zombies <laughs> will hear you. You a tale of the zombies of your... No, it'll be amazing. <gasps> It's basically I, what Tenacious D by the sound of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so me up. It's I I I uh, I'd completely forgotten about the, the crafting thing. I know it was mm. so they opened the box and get the it was, it was like a brave garden hilt or something like that, but there was mm. also looting from the bodies. Where yeah. he was yes. picking up he yeah, picked yeah, up yeah, some yeah. mushrooms, some leather, some, some salt steel in got some salt. So I'm imagining there must be I mean, we might be crafting food items, even potions. Protect, I was going to say like herbology and and yeah, just like things to like distract like noise maker potions or flash mm-hmm. potions or or you know whatever yeah. I signed me up as a bard alchemist. That's that's me. Like that, I will be <laughs> so happy. Just sitting in the corner, just basically baking crystal meth and <laughs> tooting away on my pan pipes or whatever it is I'm playing. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, please ah. have pan pipes in this game so Jamie can be that character. That'd be <laughs> incredible. Yeah, that'd be like accordion and pan pipes. Like one of those, right, <laughs> the harmonica, which is um, on the rig, so you can uh, yeah, play yeah. The, the, the accordion. Uh, the wee bass organ. And the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would fucking just give me a Coburn paper and the spoons and I'll just go as a full pearly king. <laughs> just doing the old clappity clap. It'd be great. But, no, it looks it looks great, and I, I like I like zombie survival. I like co op. I like rogue like you know. There's everything's there, and the setting looks phenomenal, and it looks really polished. Mm. And really, yeah. like I, I yeah. kind of got a little bit of like close in uh, AC vibes, like you know, it had a little yeah, bit of the yeah. sort of Assassin's yeah. Creed esque with mm-hmm, the just mm-hmm. just appearance wise, but like the destroyed beauty type thing as, as they call it of sort of like a medieval gears sort of thing with everything being yeah. you know mm. fucked so that's, the landscape is just foobar so yeah. yeah you're very excited for this one it does look incredible so yeah let's let's wrap up there we're hugely excited for blight survival don't know when it's coming out it's on wish list already on, on steam but I hope it's I hope it's going to be coming to the other the other uh, home consoles as well because it just has banger written all over it as well. Mm-hmm. But guys, that brings us an end to episode eighty four of the Weekend Catch Up Club podcast. A massive thank you for uh, the two of you as always, and of course to our audience for for tuning in and listening and watching as well. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next week for more shenanigans. We'll, we well by the time next week actually comes out, we will have had god of war ragnarok for probably a few hours so we may have initial chat about that to talk about our how giddy we are if we can pry sarah away from her <laughs> her sofa and her no controller promises. we'll do our best no promises exactly yeah. <laughs> but uh that's it take care and we'll see you next week Bye bye <laughs>